Hello, I'm Jane Fraser and I'm an outreach worker for Dudley Museum Service. Uh, Dudley is honoured to own a lithograph by Matisse, given as a bequest. A lithograph is a print of a painting made by the artist or under instructions from the artist. It may be made in a variety of ways, the most authentic being hand-drawn on stone or aluminium plates. This particular one is numbered and signed by the artist and is from a portfolio called Dix Danseurs, Ten Dancers, a study of the human figure as embodied in ballet dancers. Henri-Emile Benoit Matisse was born to a wealthy bourgeois family in Picardy, northern France, in 1869. He trained as a lawyer in Paris and worked for a short time as a court administrator, but after an illness and encouraged by his mother, decided to turn to art. He studied at the Académie Julien, where he learned from and bought the work of those artists he admired. A particular influence was Cézanne. Matisse was recognised as the leader of the fauve, literally wild animals, a group of artists who experimented with bright colours and flat shapes. The movement was short-lived but very influential, despite attracting strong criticism. One view was that a pot of paint has been flung into the face of the public. An American journalist who was sent to interview him was amazed to find he looked very respectable and sober in his suits, not like the wildly unconventional art he produced. He went on to work and study in Paris, London, Spain and North Africa. A particular draw was South East France, where many artists enjoyed the extraordinary quality of the light. He produced sculptures, designs for costumes and buildings, and even when he was confined to a wheelchair in the last years of his life, he continued to explore new ways of making art, resulting in his wonderful cutouts, reducing the human figure to solid shapes in his trademark bold colours, but still conveying energy and movement in a remarkably expressive way. This very early work shows a pensive dancer in repose, perhaps taking a break from a performance since she is in full costume. She rests her chin in her hand and stares into space, perhaps exhausted from her efforts. However, her limbs are still arranged gracefully, an arm resting on the wooden armchair and her feet in ballet shoes crossed neatly at the ankle. <coughs> To the modern eye, she may look strangely bulky with wide shoulders and large limbs, but fashions in the human body, as in everything, are subject to change. What would the dancers of the 1920s think of the sinewy but sometimes emaciated look of some ballerinas today? Compare our drawing to a much later work, Danseuse dans le fauteuil, Sol en damier. Dancer in the armchair on a chequered floor. This was from 1942. His figure drawing is still recognisable, although his style has now evolved and he is concentrating on bold and arresting colours and the arrangement of shapes in a composition. The model for this is the dancer Carla Avogardo and while her face is not rendered in a detailed, realistic style, her self-assurance, energy and good humour are evident and the whole painting is full of life and fun. From the 1920s, Matisse had been involved in the world of dance, designing sets, costumes and curtains for the Théâtre National de l'Opéra in Paris and he was approached by Diaghilev, founder of the Ballet Russe and famous impresario to design for Le Chant du Rossignol, the Song of the Nightingale, based on a work by Stravinsky. He took his inspiration from traditional Chinese court dress with colours derived from Chinese ceramics and lacquer and made in silk. The final scene with the Emperor's red cloak unfurling to symbolise blood in front of a mass of mourners in black and white must have been spectacular. 
Many of these costumes are held by museums all over the world. So from Diaghilev to Dudley, we are very fortunate indeed to have a work by the great Matisse, who, like our own David Hockney, carried on creating, experimenting and evolving into his 80s. To learn more about Dudley's collection, watch this space. We hope to return to live talks and discussions soon.